water restrictions still in place for more than 15,000 metro residents. We'll show you a map. This is the area affected right here between I-65 there on the right side of your screen. That is on the eastern section along Harding Pike also and Old Hickory Boulevard, Old Hickory down on the south side. If you live in that light green area there on the map, they're asking you to only use water for cooking, drinking, and bathing. Do not water your lawn. Don't go out and start washing the cars this morning. A 30-inch water pipe broke yesterday, leading into one of our city's main pumps near Thompson Lane. Metro water crews have been going all night, doing some temporary repairs. It's going to take several days to replace the pipe that was broken. News Channel 5's Cuthbert Langley is live for us in Green Hills in front of Hillsborough High School. You've been there all morning long and they're set up there just like they were last night when this thing first happened. What's the latest, Cuthbert? Hey, good morning, Steve. We have been out here throughout the morning, and there have been several folks who have come up and asked for those packages of water. Take a look behind me here again at the uh, high school here at Hillsborough High School. Uh, these crews here, the sheriff's officers, folks from the Office of Emergency Management, have been out here handing out big packs of water to people who live in that affected area you talked about just a little while ago, Steve. And we had Sky 5 actually fly over the scene of that water main break early this morning, and folks are telling us today with the uh, water officials, you can see just how big of a hole there is right there that uh, this fix this temporary fix is going to take about 12 hours or so but the permanent fix could take several days so while that permanent fix is being worked on they will be here handing out water both at the high school here as well as Creve Hill or excuse me Creve Hall Elementary School throughout the day today you're taking a look at some of the video from yesterday of folks handing out water I've talked to a couple of businesses here in the area and and they have not They've told us that they haven't really seen a lot of water outages. It's more that they've had some water pressure issues, and that's what we heard from Metro Water as well, that they have had very few reports of actual outages, but more so pressure issues. And you're taking a look right now. It's a solid stream of cars that have been rolling in here to the high school asking for those packs. They're handing out two packages per car. So, again, if you do live in that area, please make sure to come out here and grab water if you do need it. Uh, of course, we're going to be continuing to follow this story throughout the day as we continue to get updates. But for now, we're reporting live at Green Hill, in the Green Hills area this morning. Cuthbert Langley, New Channel 5 HD. All right, Cuthbert, thank you. And we are expecting an update this morning. About two hours from right now, they will be holding a news conference. We'll be there. We'll have the latest on newschannel5.com and 11 o'clock on Talk of the Town. Happening right now, police are looking for suspects after a shooting in Antioch. Police say someone fired at least five shots at a house on Reeve Street. Children were inside at the time. One woman was hit, but her injuries are not life-threatening. Police have not said who they're looking for or what their motive might have been. Just into the newsroom now, a man accused of breaking into some lockers at a local gymnasium. Lamar Smith was caught with bolt cutters trying to get into the lockers at the Nashville Athletic Club. They also found a wallet on him that had been missing from the YMCA downtown in Nashville on Church Street. And police say his crime spree netted him some cash, a cell phone, and athletic equipment. Though, listen to this. He told police that he threw the racquetball gear away because he, quote, does not play racquetball. He's facing several theft charges this morning. A trio who police say broke into an abandoned building have all been arrested. Police say Yancey Forg, Jennifer Brown Hazlitt, and Joseph Huggins tried burglarizing the building on Old Highway 48 Monday. Authorities caught two of them. Huggins got away, but not for long. He was found and arrested the next day. And a man made a wrong turn in downtown Nashville and ended up driving down railroad tracks. This all happened last night during our 10 o'clock news directly behind the News Channel 5 studios. Police tell us the man was driving on 3rd Avenue when he turned left onto the tracks. He got as far as an overpass above 4th Avenue where he got stuck. He got out and tried pushing the cart, but that didn't work. About that time, police showed up and the driver took off running, coincidentally, toward the jail. He's barefoot as well. Officers eventually caught him. He's being investigated for possible DUI. More charges for the man who allegedly shot at his own sister with an assault rifle. The Rutherford County Sheriff's Department telling us 39-year-old Jeffrey Jackson fired at his sister outside of his Eagleville home Tuesday morning early, and then he barricaded himself inside. He eventually surrendered after some coaxing from the sheriff's tack team, and they had an armored vehicle that probably swayed him as well. Jackson was not supposed to have a firearm, 
because of a previous domestic assault conviction. He's been charged with illegal possession of a weapon. That's in addition to the attempted criminal homicide charge that he was already facing. Also new this morning, a 25-year-old man going to prison for life for killing a man during a robbery. Aaron Walker pleaded guilty yesterday in Rutherford County to shooting and killing 45-year-old Kevin Barrett in July of 2011. Prosecutors say that Walker and another man broke into Barrett's home, tied up his girlfriend, and waited for him to show up. When he did get there, Walker shot him in the hand, and when he tried to run, Walker fired a couple of more shots, one hitting Barrett in the shoulder, the other one in the head. The co-defendant in this case, John Levendola, is due in court early next month. A former correctional officer accused of having sex with an inmate is expected in court today. Authorities say Kenyatta Fox admitted she had sex with Michael Daniels twice. He's serving time at River Bend for a 2009 murder. Fox faces felony charges. Her trial begins today. And a former Oak Grove police officer could be facing the death penalty. Ed Carter is charged with killing Candace Belt and Gloria Ross at New Life Fitness and Massage Parlor in 1994. The Kentucky New Era reports that prosecutors filed a notice yesterday of their intention to seek the death penalty. Another hearing is set for August 8th.